Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Um, today we have Myrna. Do you like Myrna Lou? Do you like me to say that? Yeah, yeah Myrna Lou is what I go. Myrna Lou. Okay. And you are a master palmist. Do you have to do something to work up the ranks to be well, a master? Well, I have 59,000 palms read, so that's what made me a master. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been doing well, it since I was 10. Yeah, so I I saw the story of how it got started, but I really do want you to tell the story because I thought it was so cute okay. about being well, in the hospital. A, I, I took two buses home from school, went to the hospital where my mother was a charge nurse, showed up for a ride home. She said, well, you aren't going to believe this. The next shift didn't show up, so I didn't know what to do. And so um, I got noisy and she had to shut me up. So she pulled a bowl off of the vol- a book off the volunteer wagon and just said, sit down here and read this. And it was a book about palmas. <laughs> so I understand one word and because it was all over my head, but every page had an illustration and I memorized every illustration. And then I couldn't remember the title of the book or the author, because when you're a kid, you don't look at that. Right. So I spent 45 years looking for that book. And when I couldn't find it, I wrote my own and it's called May I See Your Hand. Because that's oh what my I say gosh. to everybody. And the book is out of print, but I have copies. People could get it through me. So um I teach classes and it's just it's a timeless thing. It doesn't ever wear out because it's not any date, you know, it just goes on forever. So um I just did a class last week, in fact, in my house. I had eight people. I usually do eight to ten. And when it's time to leave, they don't want to leave. They're reading each other. And they're loving it. <laughs> you have to show them the door because otherwise they're there for hours. <laughs> so well, people it is, like it. It's so interesting. What is the the background? Where does it date back to? From the year 2000. Well, there's 15 kinds of palmistry. So Hindu Indian started in 2000 BC. This one is from 3000 BC. Long time. Are you still learning? Every day I pick up new information, yeah. And then I look it up, try and find out what it means, yeah. Do you just use Google? Um, When people want to get in touch with me, they go to my website. I can't do it live on the air because it loses half of the lines when you're trying to look at it through here. So I have them either email me, so I give it. But they look on my website and it tells how to do it. Oh my gosh, so you teach it. All I know about it, which is very little, is just that it, the, you read the lines on the palm, but it's like you have a lifeline. You, what what actually can you find out about someone just by looking at their hand? Well, there's five basic lines. So first of all, the lifeline, then there's the love line, the work line, reproduction, and the bracelets. And those five we all have, we're born with it. You're born, your hand is a little tiny thing this big, but that hand has lines on it. So when I wrote this book, and I'm going to show you the book. May I see your hand? Yeah, yeah, that's so cute. When I wrote the book, um, I wanted it to be authentic, even though I remembered from when I was a kid. And it said, in 1967 in America, every resident or intern has to take one whole day on palmistry. Because Mm -hmm. when a newborn baby's hand is this big and it's born, they can look and see if there's anything wrong, like a, you know, heart problem. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that something? Oh. Now we have bracelets on the wrist. And if a baby doesn't have any bracelets across here, they don't make it. <gasps> we have to have oh. at least one row. And so most people have three, four, whatever. So the rows here represent 25 years each. I saw three rows on you. So right now you're showing 75 for sure. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Blood. That's how old my mom is. So that's <laughs> Yeah, but people who are under the age of 50 are going to see 120 to 130 years old because technology and medicine and modern science is coming in and it will change it. No way. And it will make it easier for them, you know, to live longer. People are healthier now than they were when our parents were young. Right, right. Because they didn't know to exercise, eat fruits and vegetables every day. You know, don't smoke, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. And so we learned over the years. Now we know what not to do. So do you look at your own? Like, do you know it's when fine. you're going to die? Mine says, my bracelets say I'm going to 102. Ah! But my lifeline says 85. And that's because my father was 78 when he died. My mother was 85. And this is your gene pool. 
your hand is comes from who you come from. It's all your background. So the the bracelets have to do with timeline, and each row is worth twenty five years. And I'm showing four rows and a little itty bitty more. Oh my two. gosh. Okay, and then the work one, you are able to determine when they retire or what they're actually going to do for a living? What do you... No, no. On work, it has to do with if they have good work ethics, if they're, you know, a workaholic or if they're laid back and hardly do anything and have a lot of trips to the restroom or the water tower. So um, <laughs> I don't say that to people, but I can tell what kind of person I'm sitting across from. That's so. probably a really interesting part of it is that people think that they can not trick you, but make you well, try all the time. <laughs> I just did a fair this weekend. And some of the people who sat down thought they were going to pull a trick on me. And I said, uh, you can't trick me. And they said, how was going to tell a little fib. And I said, I could see in your hand what is and what isn't. And so they could pull a trick. Is any of it um, uh, your own intuition or is right, it it's all, all into that's what I was going to tell you about yours you have everybody has four fingers and under each finger means something they're called mounds and under the index finger on your hand you have three x's here the letter x usually means good luck except on the lifeline when it's a guardian angel and over here when it has to do with esp and you have three and each one is worth the most you could have is five so the average people have one or two. Some people don't have any. And that means everything goes right over their head. They don't get it. You get it. So you get it in the gut and you go, I get it. So if somebody told you they were a five-star general and you know they weren't even in the service, you don't say anything, but your mind goes, uh-huh, right. Tell me, bet me. See? And How many do you have? Four. Oh. The most you can have is five. I'll tell you who had five. You might've heard of them. Did you ever hear of a lady named Jeannie Dixon? He was always going to the White House to give them readings. The other one was Edgar Casey. Mm -hmm. He was called the sleeping. He had five. So I'm one under them. Wow. So, and you're it, one under me. That's awesome. Yours, yours is pretty big too. What does that mean? What are my powers? <laughs> it means that you know when somebody's lying or oh. you know when something doesn't feel right to you, something feels peculiar. You go, I don't like how that feels. Something isn't right. That's Some interesting. Some people don't get it. They just, something's okay. I don't care, you know, and they just let it go. So you when did. people um, come to you and want a reading, are there, is there information that you don't disclose? Well, no, I tell them, write all your questions down on a piece of paper don't let me see it. We do the whole reading. Then I say, take out your paper, see if there's anything I didn't get. They rip it up because I got it all. <laughs> that has I to see. feel so good, like so gratifying. Well, and I have so many thank you notes and scrapbooks full of them about this fat, full of wedding invitations and baby, no, you know, announcements and all kinds of things because so, I predict it. Yeah, that's amazing. Have you um, had a lot of skeptics? Not that told fibs, okay, but just let skeptics. Me tell you, let me just tell you one story. I yeah. met Gerald Ford, who used to be our president. Yes. He was at a party in Colorado, and he was a keynote speaker. I was hired by an agency. Ten of us were hired to go there and do what we do. And he sat down in my line, and I didn't realize who it was because I'm with, doing this, yeah. working with people. <laughs> and I look up, and he had four Secret Service standing right behind him. So I said, you know, when he told me who he was, because I'm stupid, I didn't get it. I said, <laughs> could you tell them to move away because I have a big mouth and they're going to hear what I have to say. So he said, well, if you don't tell me something that only I know, I'm going to call you a faker and go downstairs and tell everybody not to get your line. So I said, OK. So he had them stand room, and this was in a place called the Eagle's Nest, the big ski lodge. And they were way up far across the room. And I made a little prayer to myself that I would be really brilliant. And I usually don't do that. But I said, please help me tell him something that only he knows. Well, I told him something. He jumped up and yelled, I'm a believer. And they said, what did you do to him? And I said, uh, he told me to tell him something only he knew. And I did. So then they all got in line. And I read all of them too. The do me, do me. He gave me a $10 tip in those years. It was in the early 90s. Even two dollars was good. Wow. So he really he said from a to a non-believer to a believer. I love right. that. Are you gonna write any more books? Yeah, I'm in the middle of one right now. 
is, is right. does the information change with the times? No. It's it's always the, the same. The, the information is the information. The person changes. You can make yourself better or worse than you are today, but you can't change. For instance, my sister is a user and I'm a giver. So I wrote four books and she wrote four. So I said, oh, I'd like to see your books. I didn't know you wrote any books. She said, well, they're all in the closet on the manuscript <laughs> in manuscript form and they're up on the shelf. So I said, why is that? And she said, oh, the publishers love you. They don't love me. <laughs> well, yeah, because I give whatever I have to give and she yeah. gives nothing. She wants, she's a taker. Okay, there's people that are Mother Earth types, that's you, who care about humanity, community, right? Environment, yeah. the weather, yeah. people, animal, all kinds of things. And there's people who care about me, 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 me. And she's a me, me. <laughs> And nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> I can't, I wouldn't tell her that. In a million years, I just do all kinds of things. And I do it for everybody. You know, because I feel like if you have a talent, give it. So I give it out. <clears throat> That's so yeah. crazy that that book found you. I mean, it's not crazy if you believe. No, I'm glad but... that it did. Well, my mother was 78 when she, or she was 89 when she died. And when she was 78, she said to me, aren't you bored yet? I said, how could you get bored? Every single hand is different. And it's a plethora of ideas. I could write anything about any of them. And there's a lot of stuff. So I wrote one is called The Diary of a Palm Reader. And it has murderers, kidnappers, embezzlers, blackmailers, UFO people. I see it all. And I call them on it. And I say, I see you embezzled. And the guy will say, I gave that 100000 back to IBM. I served my time but I get it right from his hand. So I, there's a lot of information there. <laughs> oh, my mind's blown. How, how, how do you? Because I study it and I, because I know what I'm looking for. But, so when you teach work. people, do you teach them everything that you know? So that no, they... it's a two hour class. So I go over the basics and I show each person on their hand, what their, you know, what it is. Then I make them draw their hand. Well, actually, my book on page 25 is a blank hand. I make them put their lines in the book. Now they're in the book. It's stuck. All you have to do is pick it up, lift, leaf through it like an encyclopedia and look up what you're looking for. Then I start with the symbols and everybody has different symbols. So anyway, I love what I do. And I'm 84 years old. I shouldn't be still working. And oh, I'm still my... working. And I work probably I, on a week when I have a fair, I work about 50 hours. On a normal week, I work about 25. So I should have well, retired many years ago. Yeah. Well, when I was on your website, I was looking at, I don't remember what the, the category was, but I could see where you toured or where all the places you visited. All, or no, so, it was all the different programs you had been on. And I was like, scroll, scroll. I was like this woman. There's a lot of it. And I didn't even yeah. put them all up there because my husband said, who's going to look at that? You don't want to list them all. And I said, yeah, I do. I do. But I only put some of them. I haven't put them all on. So I lived in Colorado, California, Illinois, Indiana, and I was born in Ohio and then Florida twice. So I'm here now. And I was here in the 70s. So I read people in all those places. So I read in the 70s in Florida. You read who? Jackie Gleason. Did you ever oh, hear him? Oh, yes. I read John Travolta in California. Wow. Um, these are names you would know. I read yeah. um, when I was 16 and he was 17 and I did uh, Phil Donahue. Oh, my gosh. I wanted I to told be him, Donahue. <laughs> yeah, but wait, I told him he was going to be the first TV talk show host and he was. Oh, my gosh. He was 17. He didn't do that until he was 24. He was out of college and but that's when he found it. That's I what I that always coming. wanted to be. I saw you went to journalism school. What did yeah, you think that you were going to do with your, were you always just, I'm going to be a palm reader or did you? No, wanna... no, no. I'm, writing is my first love. That's why I'm writing books all the time. The palm reading is a passion. So I said, you ought to write what you know about. And I know about this. So I wrote <laughs> all the ones. So most people that I see, the women want to know about love and romance and where's their soulmate. And blah blah blah. So I wrote a book about soulmate to help them find <laughs> blah one. blah blah. <laughs> well, because that's what they start. They go on and on and on. So I said, let me help you. Here's this book. Look on this page, and one only has one illustration, and it's a soulmate illustration. So when they read that, they go, oh, those are the characters I'm looking for, the characteristics in a person. So that's it. 
Yeah. Mm. So then um, I did, may I see your hand? I did this one, which is the soulmate one. I did the diary. And the one that's a novel is called Cruise to the Other Side. And that's on a cruise ship. And there's oh, a, it's pretty, I tried, I'm trying to get it made into a movie. Really? Did you ever hear of The Sixth Sense, the movie The Sixth Sense? Yes, yes. Well, I wrote to the producer and the director of that movie. And they said, send us the book. We want to read it. So they read it, said, you have something here, but we can't take it because it would be too expensive to rent a whole cruise ship and hundreds and hundreds of extras. They did so it they for the Titanic. Do it, but I'm not giving up. I'm still trying to find somebody that will take it. Because yeah. It's, it's a metaphysical book. Oh, you know, it's gosh. Got all kinds of weird. It's a mystery and a love story and metaphysical all mixed in. And the one I'm writing now is about um, a nanny who kidnaps a newborn baby off the cruise ship. It's two months old. But I have to call the FBI and I'm afraid to. I'm afraid if I call them, they'll think I did something or that I'm the one that wants to steal the baby, you know, so I'm trying to figure out how to say it to them. Yeah. Wow. So, so women when, all, all want to know about soulmates and love. What do the, the men, men want to know about? about finances and money? And do I have any and is more coming? And am I getting streams of money? And where's the money coming from? And how much am I going to have? And can I retire early? That's what they all ask me that's so I funny go, I go no dear you have to work till your social security age and they go I knew that <laughs> oh my gosh what's the weirdest thing somebody's asked you the weirdest thing oh I can't even think there's been so many I mean <laughs> people say should I uh, move to a new location so that maybe I could find my soulmate or I say well don't you think you should have a job and know where you're moving before you worry a soulmate and they go well yeah so that's that's weird because thinking in steps you know yeah thinking progress what to do next what to do how to do it so some people are just a little bit airheady right. <laughs> i call yeah. them flighty you know, scattered <laughs> and they go i like that oh that's it does like my hand okay. show that i'm that i'm scattered <laughs> no i feel <laughs> Let like me tell I you am. what your hand said yeah. I'll just tell you, I'll read you some of the, I have to put my glasses on, even yeah. though my handwriting's so wonderful. <laughs> it says, nothing you have is life-threatening. Your IQ is better than average. Hmm. So that's good. And it says that on your love line, it shows when you were young, you had a connection, but that's over with. That might've been your first love. Then it says you have luck on romance, but the old one fizzled and then you got out of it. Yeah. Um, it shows a union in midlife. It has um, a union of two people. It looks like this. It looks like a chip. And if it has a base on the bottom, now it looks like a triangle. And you have two. What does that so mean? So that means it's twice as good as most people's. Oh. <laughs> you have a really good connection. So it means you're going to them, they're coming to you, but you're both putting each other first instead of me, me thing. On work, it says you're a hard worker. You you have a lot of X's there, which means your work ethic is good. They always like what you're doing. Then I told you you had three bracelets, so that represented 75 years. On reproduction, it says you had four children. So I don't know if you had any or not, but it says you could have had four, three girls and one boy. But the male determines the sex of a woman. They just showed that you were normal in the plumbing department. And we, <laughs> talked, about, <laughs> we talked about your ESP. Um, have a lot of things that catch your eye. Those are called interests or things that you'll stop what you're doing to look at it and try to take it all. So let's say you were walking through the house. You hear there's been a breakthrough in camp. You're not a doctor, but you want to know about it anyway. So you stand there and watch it. Then you call a friend up and tell her what you saw because maybe she had heard that. So now you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. And that's one of your interests is to learn information and pass it on. And then it says on allergies, you have some, but they're only a nuisance, nothing life-threatening or bad, and nothing major. So that's how much I got in five minutes. Wow. So if I had done your real thing, it, it's a big, thick, you know, it's it's intense. And wow. And your prices and everything are on your um, yeah. website? And okay. my website is www.mernaloo, it's spelled M-Y-R-N-A-L-O-U.com. And um, a lot of people get to me through that. And then if they wanted to email me, it's palmist, 
P-A-L-M-I-S-T at MyrnaLude.com. I think no. that is just so fascinating. I want to learn it. I want to learn how to do it. I think I would you just... need to get my book. You could teach yourself. That's the, may I see your hand? Actually, I'll show you my, oh, I can't unhook. I can't unhook to go get it. <laughs> um, it has on every page, there's an illustration. Okay. And so each line is illustrated with a discussion about it. Then there's margins on each side where people make notes. You know, oh. And so- yeah, it's, I for sure want to get that book. I think okay, it's just well, the only way you can get that one. It's out of print. Publisher went out of business, so I have them and I get them reprinted. Okay. So if you wanted to, uh, that one's twenty dollars. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds amazing. Um, what else was I going to ask you? I had uh, so soulmates are a thing. They are real. Because some people make make light of it and say there's no such thing as a soulmate. No, there's, it's twin soul that's very rare. And that's what they make light about, not soulmate. Okay. So I got my soulmate this time. So I've been married three times. First one died after 20 years. Oh. Second one was 13, a divorce. This one's 31. Oh my one gosh. day, we're, I'm waiting for the second one. We never <laughs> had it. He, we just clicked. We clicked. You hear a thing in your head that goes snap. They hear yeah. the click at the same time. That's it. So that's what a soulmate was. So I, when that happened, I knew it. And he knew it too. What does he think about this palm rating stuff? Does he believe in all he of said, it? He's my manager. He's the one who set me all up with this because I couldn't do it. I said, <laughs> oh, it's a Zoom, but it, I can't, I don't know what to do. And so he came in yelling at me. He said, that you're getting worse with old age. You don't remember we do this and this, but you have to plug in the earphone things, you know, yeah. there's stuff that, I don't yeah. know where you plug it in. I, I'm the same way. I'm not techie, but I, I can do the talking part. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, just let me do my good the stuff I'm good yeah. at and you handle the rest <laughs> terrible because I talk so much I want I bring my voice box it's about worn down to nothing but I can't help it that's because I talk all day long yeah yeah do you uh, do you know when you're gonna stop well stop at 80 and then I said oh I can't I'm having too much fun then I said at 82 now I'm 84 he just made me buy a new timer, a new cart to carry stuff, cares, a new table. I'm going to have to do it a couple more years. <laughs> so I said, I'll be 90 and going, let me see your hand, dear, with the magnifier. <laughs> but I'll be able to do it. Oh, but, that's amazing. You know, subject, you know, you know what yeah. you're talking about. Have you been able to teach anybody exactly what you know? Like, yeah. or, There are yeah. people out there that are doing this and making a lot of money. And yeah. they're doing it in Colorado and California and the different places I live. If somebody actually gets into it, they want more and more and more. So I tell people the first class is a two-hour class. Then if they want to come back and sit through that whole thing all over again, I don't charge them the second time. And then they go, can I come a third time? I say, I don't care, you know, because <laughs> I don't have to teach them. I have to teach the others. So they just sort of sit through and listen, and then they make more notes, you know, and then they go out and they start doing it. So I did two girls, and one of them's name was Dawn, as a matter of fact. Oh, and funny. And they came to my class, which was in a bridal shop, believe it or not. <laughs> the back room of a bridal shop was in a, a big room, and they decided to put me on the marquee out in front. Myrna Lou was here to help bring people in, and it did. People came in, but for me, not to buy wedding dresses or to buy bridesmaids' dresses. <laughs> so anyway, these two girls learned the class. They left, and about an hour later, I get a phone call. I'm home, and they said... We just stopped at a bar to have a Coke and we started telling the bartender we just class and we made more money than groceries are going to cost all week. Oh my God. Everybody went right up to them and they were telling people what they learned. You know, they were excited. Yeah. Well, I think people, they don't, they think it's just like woo woo or fake or something, but they well, still are intrigued. Scientific. Yeah. Like no, they're this intrigued. one's scientific. This is yeah. astrology, numerology, and palmistry are all science. Then the tarot cards, I'm not so sure that's science. I think that's more woo-woo. Right. Yeah. And astrology is another one that I just find so fascinating. Did but you ever delve? It's really difficult. It's yeah. hard to learn that. There's so many different facets of it though, too. But I didn't realize there was with palm reading either. I oh, thought yeah. it was just you just read a palm. I didn't realize that there was so much history. Oh, there's so to much. It. I could do four hours on a hand if I wanted to, but the person couldn't sit there like this for four hours. They yeah. would lose, their arm would go to sleep. You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but 
but there's a lot of information. Like Oriental people believe that it's predetermined. Well, some of it is, but you, as you get older, you start having more experiences. A baby doesn't have any. Right. And they go to their first time. You actually have an up and down where something big happens. You're maybe 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the next time, maybe you're 25 and another big thing happens. And that all shows up. There's a timeline on the hand. So okay. how um, I read it by the time. So to me, the lifeline starts underneath the baby finger, you know, the baby finger side of the hand mm -hmm. goes towards the middle and each finger is worth 20 years and 10 in between. And your show is 92 right now. Oh, so that's wow. your relatives. Your okay. gene pool is 92. Yeah. Yeah, I, on both okay. sides, my I, my relatives lived into their 90s. Okay, that's why I said you don't come from wimpy people. <laughs> you come from the strength. You come from people who go, I will get this if it kills me. I will figure this out. And that's sort of you, right? Because you just won't give in. You don't give up. You just keep fighting until you get it. Right. So that's called a survivor and a fighter. And then I said your mother earth on top of it. So those are all pretty intense uh, you know, you're not laid back and easy going and simple. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can be, but yeah, no, in general, I would say, uh, yeah. You're, yeah, that's pretty spot on. And when you were talking about teaching and wanting to, that's the whole reason why I started the podcast. I wanted to relay information to the people that needed it. Experts here, you know, people that need to hear it here. And I'm the little and bridge. Bring them together. Yeah that's, what, yeah. that's what a caregiver does. And Mother Earth is, is the caregiver. Because you care, see? Yeah. If you didn't care, it would all be about you. Yeah. Look at me. Look how pretty I look today. <laughs> That's amazing. I am so happy that we connected, even though we struggled at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it was me, not you. <clears throat> and I hope this is loud enough that you can hear it and everything. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, it sounds fine. Yeah. Like I said, um, mm -hmm. it's great. So yeah, people can reach you um, at your website. They can email you if they want to know more. And then you, you've got other books and those are like on Amazon. Um, a couple of them are. The Soulmate book is on Amazon. And okay. it's also an ebook or a paperback book. So the diary book, I sold so many of them, I'm out. I have to get it reprinted. Oh, my gosh. What's that <laughs> I've one? I've done it many times. And I've had the, uh, may I see your handbook reprinted probably 20 times already. And I do 300 at a time. And I just go through them because at fairs, <sighs> people buy them. Then I do them on the internet. People from all over the world are ordering them. I have a client in Japan that wants me to come and visit her. She has all my books. So she put them all on a bed and spread them out, took a picture and sent me the picture. She says, see, I look, you need to come and visit me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to Japan, but it's just very nice that she asked me. But I've been asked to come to Australia and other places, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. No wonder you just keep going. You're right, highly Because wanted. I get the up out of it. If you get an up or a kick out of something, it's not really work. I get to play. Yeah. You know, I'm tired after I do it. But, <laughs> so I do like two morning readings and two afternoon. That's four a day. Oh. And those are pretty, they're an hour each and it's pretty intense. Then if I do some on the internet, one time a video show out of Canada, I got 40 readings. Oh, one show. oh my God. 40 people wrote me and sent money <laughs> and I had to put them in an end basket. I did a couple every day in between everything else. Took me a long time to get through 40 of them. Wow. I couldn't believe that happened. Um, the guy who was the host was sick that day. He didn't feel good. So he just let me run off at the mouth the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk much. Oh, oh that's funny. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So well, interesting. A, that was the most I ever got from a show. So if I could give my website one more time. Do it. Yes. Get, any any but, contact stuff. You bet. Okay www.my, like my, r-n-a-l-o-u.com. And my email is palmist, P-A-L-M-I-S-T, blue.com. And so my name is hard to spell, but if they see M-Y, M-Y, and then add R-N-A to it, it's okay, but it's all one word. Like yeah. Mary Lou is one word, so this is Myrna Lou. Gotcha. Okay, and well, and I'll put all like of that. that 
um, in the show notes. So the, all they'll have to do is oh, just good. click on a link and it'll be easy oh, for them. Okay. Yeah. Along with your book titles and everything, it'll all be in the show notes. So that makes oh, it good. easy for everybody to find you. This has been so awesome. I appreciate all the information that you gave me about my poem. I wasn't about expecting you? that. Yeah, that was really sweet. Um, I just didn't know if that was something that you well, were going to Well, you said it in your hand, so I thought, do it. You know, so I just scribbled out some notes real quick because I just got it about 15 minutes before. Oh my God, you're good. Know. You are good. Well, yeah. thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to meet you and I will definitely be in touch. Thank you very much. I'm glad I got to do it. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.